what's going on gang welcome back to the channel so finally after two years of the bike being together it's time to tune it okay finally so guys let me show you what i got going on here now i have a uh, starter clutch i have some final drive gears i have some springs i think they call it the contra spring then the smaller springs for the clutch pads and then i have some uh, weights now i need a new starter um clutch because this thing does a loud you know when it starts and uh i was talking to a friend and he said yeah that's most likely to start a collection it's kind of what i was thinking too so i got this brand new one brand new one brand new one from glixel so i'm probably already uh messing myself up by buying glixel but you know it was the fastest one that i could get in and it said high performance so you know i totally believe him that this is a high performance uh starter clutch so let's look at this thing real quick I mean, it does look a little different on the back side because it has six like little bolts. And I think the other one had like three of these little bolt things on the perimeter. It was like one there, one there, one there. And this has three more. So I don't know if it works, I'm happy. If it don't, then I'm going to be pissed because I have to take that out and drain the oil again. All right, now we have a set of final drive gears, uh, 17 and 36 to 17 on the small gear. 36 teeth on the big gear now this is not actually the gear that i ordered and guys i ordered this a year ago and it finally showed up it was on back order i forgot it was even coming i got an email said it was on its way and i was like what are you talking about i ain't ordered nothing and then all of a sudden it showed up in my mailbox i was like when the heck did i order this so when i finally went back and looked guys i had ordered these gears a year ago and no i'm not going to tell you who i ordered it from and i'll put them on blast here on youtube but it, it wasn't their fault you know it was on back order they didn't have any in and it took tater that long to get them to them got some springs i think they call these the contra springs and then here's the springs for the clutch we got 1500 2000 and 1000 springs i think i do have the yellow um contra spring inside the clutch already I don't think I ever put my 1500 springs in there because I think they're in a bucket somewhere over there floating around. I'm pretty sure. And we have some uh, slider weights, some Kosos. Now these are not the real Koso guys. These are knockoffs. You can tell by the packaging, X Power, but they say Koso. But I have these same, well not the same, these are round slider weights in the bike already. And they've been in there for a long while and they're fine. So I'm not mad at these, you know, they work cool freaking beans you know what i'm saying that's all we care about if it works if not this is good for tuning you know that way i can figure out which weights that i want to run because here i have a 10 gram a 15 gram and a 12 gram and i can't remember what's in the bike already so all right gang let's go ahead and uh, get the drain pans out drain the bike out and get to work grab a eight mil and my flathead and looks like i lost the screw Okay, I got both eight mils in there. That's cool. So yeah, let me get this the uh, cover off the um, fan. What's behind that? The magneto, the stator, and then we're gonna start pulling this thing apart. got our side cover off now we can go ahead and take our special socket with the prongs on it and take off this nut now if memory serves me correct uh forward is reverse and reverse is forward with this nut so all right guys so when you're taking this nut off to get off the starter clutch you got to remember righty is not tidy and lefty is not loosey it's lefty tidy righty loosey so it's all reversed all right you got a washer right here and uh that washer holds in some bearings let's pull this thing off let me pull this thing off guys it's, guys it's going to want to separate because these two pieces come out now your starter clutch will spin freely this way but when you turn it that way the whole deal turns so see all right, now I'm looking at this starter clutch, guys, and I think I know what's wrong with it. I'm not sure, but 
I can feel it. See these like rivets here? These pins or whatever they are? Well, each one of them is bucked up. Yes. You, know, you kind of feel it's kind of cocked that way. And this one, if you can see, it's not even really sticking through. So, yeah, gang, I think it was our starter clutch. Now, compare this starter clutch to our new one. Now, what I did notice when I was looking at it online, you see these little rivets right here? There's six of these on the perimeter, perimeter. And on this one, it's only three. So, Glixel advertises this as a high-performance uh, starter clutch. I don't know. I'm not saying they're lying, but, you know, it is Glixel, and it did come from Amazon. So, all right, gang, that is what I see wrong. So, let's go ahead and just put this new one on. Oops. I don't know why I'm worried about that thing falling. It's junk. It's junky, basura. All right. Cool. Line that back up. Let's put our washer back on. And our nut. Remember, it is not righty. What? That's my left hand. It's not righty tidy, lefty loosey. It's lefty tidy, righty loosey. So. Spin that sucker in reverse and it's tightening up. Cool beans. Alright, so kick our gun into reverse. And you don't want to go all Michael Jackson on this thing bad. Because as you can see now, this is only the second time that I've had to take that nut off when I first built it and now. And you can see where that socket really is starting to beat that up. So if I got to take this engine apart again, I'm going to order a new one of these nuts. So, all right, let me go ahead and get the gasket glue off this guys and clean it up and uh, slap this side back together. Then we jump to the final drive gears. I got the bike back together on this side. I got the um, cover back on and look, I even painted my fan red inside there. Guys, do not buy those turbo fans. You will end up destroying your motor. Just take your stock fan and paint it red and tell everybody it's, it's a performance fan. All right, so let's put the exhaust back on and I think I want to change out my tip for that one over there. It has like a triangle tip instead of the two big holes that one has. Just want to see what it sounds like exhaust back on and here's the one i want to try that was hanging on the wall over there now you see it is a little bit longer you know but i don't hate it you know i do kind of like my shorter one now that i'm looking at it but i don't hate this one still curious still want to see what it sounds like and yes it has a silencer in it so I'm also curious to see what this bike sounds like with a little silencer on it all right guys, well, this thing is not in the best condition, but like I say, I'm just curious. We always can switch it back. So me manhandle the springs off and swap this thing out. All right guys, I got it on and I do not like it. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't like it. I didn't even fully clamp it on. I'm just sitting there looking at it, man, like, nah, I think I had it right the first time. And uh, just go ahead and put my shorty back on, man. I never had these pipes, you know, well, exhaust mufflers, what do you want to call them? I've never had them side by side. And truthfully, it's not really going to be a big sound difference, especially once I take the silencer out of that one. Right now, it really just boils down to, because it's just a straight flow through car, uh, muffler. So what it really boils down to is just, which one do you like better? And I like the shorty better. So shorty is going back on. Right, that's what it is shorty's going back on i'm going to pull the bike out and let's drain the um final drive gear case and i think i gotta take the variator clutch all that out first so yeah let's get on the other side now okay gang made it over here to the other side of the bike i got an old hubcap from a, i think it's an old ford i don't know guys i kind of like my old hubcaps you know, i think these up here in the wall are from like the 40s or the 50s not sure had them for a while Okay, gang, I decided just to go ahead and put the whole CBT uh, case back together because I might lose some, you know, I'm really good at that. I'm also a professional procrastinator, guys. You know, when I don't want to do something, like put this switch on, 
it's not hard i just not motivated i don't know what it is <laughs> you know you know if you, if you like that drop it in the comments let me know what do you know you don't like to do you will procrastinate for hours not to do it but it's simple but you just don't want to do it you know all right also what i want to do is clean up this handlebar here guys i think i'm going to lose the led lights you know they're they're nice they're bright but it's like it's too much going on right in here you know so the signal lights i gotta go because they bolt to the uh, controls so if i gotta take this control off i'm just gonna do them both just take them off besides this one's kind of cut sideways now i got these signals i'm just gonna put them right here where these little reflectors are at i think that'll look just fine so let me stop talking and procrastinating and get to work figured out why the uh, start button stopped working this yellow and green wire that we was trying to figure out where it went well it goes back up there and also you can see it's broke away from its solder point so okay could solder it back together and fix it but nope we got a new cool looking switch right here so all right that means this wire is a ground since it's going back in and soldered to the ground next to it so cool beans uh, I guess I'm gonna have to make sure that wire runs to a ground all right okay again check it out got my start switch all wired up hooked up now it's just like the derby off is on and on is off but you know that's cool we're not worried about it let me hit the button all right yeah. off is on and on is off well the new starter clutch definitely took care of that clunk noise that we used to hear hey check it out I, I was just looking at the old starter clutch and yeah those pins they were they were shifted there's actually some discoloration right there at the ends of them so yeah things were not going well inside of there all right check out my uh soldering connections i almost made it all the way through all four wires without forgetting to put on the heat shrink until i got to that wire there i had to cut that one back apart and um put the heat shrink on I'm running, I have ran completely out of my um, solder stick connections, so gotta order more. Okay, gang, check it out. I'm changing the angle of the handlebar. Let me move this side, that lights in your face. Yeah, see my handlebar? This is more this way forward. That's how I had it, and this one's more straight up. Yeah, I kind of don't like the ride position that way anymore, so I decided, well, this now is a perfect time to put on my uh, aftermarket master cylinder and uh, mangle brake side. So let me go find those and we're going to go wire that in. Okay, guys, here's our new brake levers, new master cylinder, new manual brake for the rear. Now, these things need a little work, so I'm going to clean them up a little bit and I'll tune you guys right back in. sure but it, it seems to be holding and now when I first started off I didn't have this little piece of hose clamp that I you know took apart unraveled and just wrapped around that tip to kind of just have like a little cup to hold that uh, aluminum but yeah man it's the first time using these things I've had them forever I saw them at Harbor Freight years ago uh, Luma weld rods need uh, needs no flux so yeah, I don't know if Harbor Freight still has them, guys, but that's where I found them at. So when this cools, what I'm all I gotta do is just redrill the hole better, and take my grinder and shape it. And hey, if it works, it works. You know, save me a whole bunch of money. I paid five bucks for these at the junkyard, so we all in the win-win. So okay, gang, I'm gonna let that cool, and then we're gonna go ahead and put them up here. And uh, I need to check and see when the switch is coming. Also, gang, check this out. Uh, I'm switching out my uh, my light switch. I found this one that was going to go on my ruckus, which never happened. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one in here. I just got to drill a hole bigger and wire it in.
Okay, check it out, gang. Got my lights all wired up and my signals down there too. So check it out. Turn the switch on. Blue lights comes on. If I hit the button, I have headlights. And that's all running through a relay, guys. This is just not it's like straight wired or nothing. It's all running through a relay. So it's not a lot of power running through this switch so it'll get hot. You got to run uh, things like this through a relay, not straight to the battery. That way it doesn't, you know, create heat and burn up. So turn the switch off, lights on, lights off, no battery drain. Check out the signals. I turn the lights off, don't need those. Yeah, the right signal is blinking. Those things are bright. Super bright. Let's do the left. Super bright. Okay, gang. Check it out. Now, the reason I wired my lights like that is so I can go into stealth mode. Let's see. Now, hopefully my battery's not dead because I've been doing this for a while. Let's, trick, let's crank the bike up. Well, maybe I should hold the switch. Okay, lights on, headlights on, I can turn them off. But I still have a tail light, right? So, if I turn my switch off, notice my bike does not shut off. There's no more tail light. That, ladies and gentlemen, is called stealth mode. Now, I let your imagination run wild why I need stealth mode. You know, okay. So, all right, check this out, gang. Here is our brake lever. Let's go ahead and take off the uh, hose clamp. Let's see that it stick good. All right, it's on there, and it is ugly, but we're gonna shave all of that down. But look at that; it, it worked. Built up that uh, aluminum. So I'm gonna take a few moments find my flap wheel if I can oh here it is take my flap wheel to it and get this thing a little bit of shape and I'll turn you guys right back in a few moments later check it out man it's looking real good looking real good things are going real good and then all of a sudden I went to go drill a hole through the middle and it just popped straight out all right I'm not going to give up what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill like a little hole like a two maybe three holes around small holes and uh, I think I'm going to find a bolt that can go up the middle, put our strap back on. We're going to try it one more time. All right, gang, did it again. So hopefully now I don't have to drill that hole because I stuck a bolt straight through it and melted the uh, aluminum around it. So I had to put a washer on the bottom because the holes I drilled in it, they just start puking straight to the floor. You can see it right there. But, all right, I'm going to start shaping on this thing. And if it don't work this time, I'm just going to give up. All right, check it out. It came out good this time. I took a little bit of uh, this glaze and putty and filled in some of the little divots and pits that was there. But it's there. Now, that aluminum, um, aluma weld, it flowed through two of the holes. One of them, it just didn't go through. But, hey, two out of three is good for me. So that should hold it, you know, you can see how it flowed all the way through and I shaved it up. So, all right, I'm about to go ahead and put some paint on this thing and put it on the bike. All right, gang, it's six days later, man. And today they say it's just going to be cloudy, no rain. I'm going to tell you right now, I trust the weather, man. It's about as much as I trust the meth hit and that's not much at all. Okay, we got to get back on the Zuma. Got to go ahead and grab our freshly painted brake handles, the levers and put them all back together they go to guts and make sure those work got to bleed the brakes and also check this out i have the um the switch for the left hand the signal switch horn switch light switch yep there that is right there so we're gonna go ahead and wire that on in got me some of these new solder connections different company different brand the q jet whatever i don't know they 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 uh they advertise next day delivery, so that's why we went with them. All right, let me get all the bikes out, and we're going to get started. Talk about feeling silly. Check this out, man. I uh, took the levers off the wall, and uh some reason, I just figured out that I didn't have to do all of that. I could have just put this thing on the other side, see? Right, left, it's the same on both sides. So I could have just flipped it over and painted it and didn't go through all of that whole debacle. 
of trying to fix it but we learned something all right guys check this out now i just realized when i was doing some editing yesterday that all the footage for me putting the final drive gears in is gone so all right check this out <laughs> it's all cleaned up they're in there those are the theta 1736 gears they in there trust me because the other one's over there on the wall so let me go ahead and get these levers put together get these on the bike and i'm gonna go ahead and wire in this uh switch and hopefully the weather holds up and we're gonna take a ride got the handles all back together and uh just sitting here noticing that they're made a little different this one has more of an angle downwards and this one's straight across well, you know this is a clutch handle anyway so oh yeah what i had to do to make this side work with a brake cable instead of a clutch cable i had to move the uh clutch adjustment screw thingy here and then just kind of open that up a little bit with my screwdriver and my brake cable fit right in so i mean it's good i still got to hook the cable up in the back but yeah it's good the switch works real good i still gotta um fill the master and bleed these brakes again up front so we have front brakes and i need to go ahead and put the brake switch on this side which i realized on the uh other master cylinder i had i never had the brake switch hooked up on this side so i'm going to take care of all of that and then i'm going to wow well, can't talk then i'm going to go ahead and wire in this uh new switch i want to go ahead and put it on so check it out removing those led lights up top man i mean the bar is all cleaned up now it looks a whole lot better it doesn't look so junky up here, you know what I'm saying? So, all right, gang, let me wire the switch in and tighten up a couple things, and I'll tune you right back in. All right, Houston, we got a problem, man. Check it out. We got the uh, left signal working just fine, but no right signal. Went up here, and I confirmed my wiring colors. You know, had to pull it back down. Black, red, and blue. And I have my black, red, and blue wires here connected. And then I got to looking back at the wiring diagram again, making sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. Then I saw this. If the right turn switch is broken, please do not be nervous. There is no problem with the product. Please use the correct wiring diagram. Okay. But no information on which wiring diagram I should use or where to go look for it. And guys, I just remembered, I got the same problem with the Derby, and I thought it was maybe my flasher, but no, it's this junk wire. And I think somebody commented that they used this switch and it was junk. And I just like, eh, okay, whatever, you know? But, all right, guys, well, I think we got an issue because if I have my three wires here and they're wired in and they're not working, and I have my three wires here wired in. So evidently this black wire here is uh, not making contact inside there. There's no correct wiring diagram to use. I'm thinking this is just a little way to say, yeah, our product is crap and it's yours now. So just be happy with it, <laughs> you know? All right, man, um, I'm gonna play with it for a second. If I figure it out, I'll let you know what I did. If I don't, I'm just gonna put it together so I've had this switch probably too long now to send it back. And um, it's going to learn a lesson. Don't buy this crap no more. Don't buy this switch from Amazon. Alright gang, I'm at my wits end with this, um, this switch. I just went to look and make sure all these little pins are pressed down on the signals. Make sure I'm getting a good connection. And check that out. See the horn wire? Yeah. He just decided to come loose. So... Uh, we'll be going back to my original um, switch and taking this junk off and calling Amazon or emailing Amazon and see can I get my money back. Okay gang, I decided to take apart this switch assembly real quick just to see what was going on inside. And what's going on inside is pure deception. It says use the correct diagram if you can't get the right signal to work. Well, the reason you can't get the right signal to work is because it's set up wrong. Now, per the instructions, the red is the power, the black is the right, and the blue is the left. So, blue, red, black. So check this out. Here is where they connect to. Now, that copper one that comes down and make, makes an L, that is your blue wire. The one in the middle is your red, and the one to the right is your uh, right signal. Okay, now check this out. I got it drawn out here. And excuse my handwriting. But left 
power right. Now, when your switch is cocked to the left, these little contacts right here, this center one always sits on the left. Always. The way it's designed, it always sits right there on the left switch. Okay? So, when you click it to the right, you're making the connection between your power in the middle and your left here, right? But when you click it right, you're hooking both signals together. There's no power in the, equa in the equation. So this thing is a pure scam. But I can order a new switch that's correct and make it right. But do not buy this unless you plan on taking it apart and fixing it yourself. All right, I got this crap bagged up and return process initiated. So we're back to where we were at before. If I hadn't took the time to mess with these things, man, I swear we could have been done by now. So, okay, next thing I gotta do is um, bleed my master cylinder, get my brakes working up front again, and we're done. And now bleeding brakes on a scooter or a motorcycle is just like a car. You know, what I like to do is fill my master cylinder pump it pump it pump it the fluid is going to go down to the caliper and it's a lot of pumping dude i mean sometimes i fill the caliper you know through the um the bleeder valve and then try to fill the line but truthfully it's just best just to just keep filling your reservoir and keep pumping until you start to build pressure i mean that's what i do that's probably a better way to do it but that's what i do gang you know something this is the only bike that I got that doesn't have a name. So last day or so I came up with a name and I think it fits the bike, you know. I'm calling this bike the ZY6. Z is for Zuma, Y6 is for the GY6 engine we have on it. But okay gang, check those levers out, man. They look real good. I color bashed them to the bike. I have the orange, the matte gray, and the matte black. Looking really good. Now I gotta get me another set of uh, handlebars, grips. These uh, pro tappers are straight pro taps now. <laughs> you know, they kind of wore out on that side. And, and uh, justifiably so, that's the gripper side. You know, this is just the whole on tight and let's not fall off side. But okay, man, the bike's looking real good. Now I want to go out, guys, and I got to be very careful. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is just going to do a one quick pass. And where it is, is where it's going to be. Now what I want to do is like maybe during the next between the next couple videos i'm gonna drop some shorts of uh trying new things on the bike you know i'm just gonna let this be a slow build up to the bike being at its full potential but where is that on this run right here is where it's gonna be if you want to see all those little shorts that i'm going to drop like comment share and subscribe okay just subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it but okay gang i'm gonna go ahead and uh put my helmet on open these doors let's get out here and see what this thing can do I'm sitting here looking for my Speedo app. Then I realized it's not on this phone. Guys, I got a brand new phone. Check it out, man. You know, finally after four years, it took the screen in my old phone falling out for me to get a new one. So let me download a um, program real quick. All right, gang, we out on the street, man. Uh, I'll tell you right now, the takeoff, ooh, seriously diminished. But, you know, like I say, it's some tuning to be done. So we're gonna let this car there go on, get on down the street, and we're gonna take off behind him.
that was very disappointing. First of all, the first thing I noticed as soon as I pulled the throttle, takeoff has been cut in half. I mean, dude, I know 50 cc's that pull off way harder than this thing now. I mean, but I kind of knew the gear swap would hurt my low end, you know, and increase my top end. It didn't do that either. Okay, another thing that's going on, for some reason, my brakes are sticking. And I don't know why. Right now, it's stuck open now, and it won't go back. It wasn't doing this before I um, um, got off the table with it. So I got to figure that out. That's not a big deal. That's not a big problem. But another thing, the bike is running funny as heck. You can see there the top speed I was only able to get up to was 45 miles per hour. I'm talking about, dude, I can get a uh, GY6139 QMB to go faster than that. You know what I'm saying? And this thing has money in it. So we definitely got to get inside this CVT and figure that out. Now, I think far as it running like poop, I changed out that spark plug. You know, I had an auto light in there and uh I remember I just bought a spark plug to put in it and it was an auto light and uh it ran better with the auto light. I put an NGK in it now and it just runs like poop. But it is the NGK uh R. So that might have something to do with it. I just need a standard plug. I think the R stands for iridium or some crap. I don't remember. Don't quote me. But yeah. Yeah, gang. I mean, dismally disappointing. I gotta, I gotta figure this out, man. This is gonna bug me now to the, de you know, to the end. And the baddest thing, I don't have time to even play with it right now. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, already the afternoon, guys. I got some obligations. You know, I made some promises, and I gotta keep them. You know, but I really want to stay here and fix the bike, man. But I told people I would do some things today for them, and I gotta go do it, man. But man this sucks this blows i don't know what to do man i really want to stay here and just start pulling that cvt and swapping out I, I know i gotta get a new plug i mean this thing never ran like that before i mean it sounds horrible listen to it oh shoot i forgot i didn't hook the brake switch up on that side I'll put you guys on the chest Well, now I want to sound good. And of course, I crank it up and it wants to sound good. Look at that. My uh, rear flashes are flashing because the brake handle gets stuck now. And uh, I don't know, guys. So maybe I just got to play with it. Put a stronger spring back here. I mean, that, that, I think that's a simple fix. I am just disappointed in the takeoff for one. So the 1736 final drive gears, they might not be the business. I might have to go back to stock or get online and keep doing some research. I don't know, but I am not happy. Nope, not happy at all. I'm pulling the spark, real, uh, the spark plug real quick because, uh, I mean, guys, it was running real poopy like. So, oh, okay. Look at that. That thing is sute. So it's running rich. That's crazy because uh, it wasn't running rich before. Now I did change the plug. I put this NGKR on it. I don't know if this plug is hot enough or what the case may be, but okay. That, that makes me feel a little bit better. It's just running rich, so it's running poopy. And uh, it did have a little black smoke to it, so that explains something. And I was kind of looking at it but dude i was so freaked out i should have put a camera on it let you guys see what this thing was doing but you know hey i beat this thing but this is my baby man you know <laughs> this is my baby hey look i even had um my uh, camera mount out there i was gonna get some different shots and angles but i didn't get to my spot because it was just running so poopy on the way there okay gang well can't win them all so do me a favor like comment share subscribe if you want to see some more of the zy6 you know i'm not done with it like i say i'm going to be doing some tuning videos well not tuning videos some tuning shorts so you can watch my shorts and watch the bike get built up and finally we'll come back and just do a real full video of it you know once i figure it out because God, I don't know nothing about all this high performance. I know how to make them run and make them look good, you know? That's my thing. But okay, guys. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.